Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I got in a box from Amazon, so stick around to see who it's from. Let's go ahead and uh, open her up. Got a lot of little baggies in here. And a big around, awful big box for the the inside contents. And what we have here, boys and girls, is a Dalstrom Shogun series knife. All right, so it's uh, packaged in some like shrink wrap type cellophane. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Leatherman and cut that open. I, I've had this for a couple days. I, I admit that I've been dying to get into it. Just didn't had time to come out here and show you guys the, uh, the unboxing of it. But anyway, it's got that like, shrink wrap around the box itself, and it looks like we pull it here. It's got some. Uh, you see it's got some little tabs right there, so I'm assuming you pull it out. Well, there's another box inside of a box. Pretty cool. Uh, so this is kind of like my uh, Michelangelo knife I had. It's, it's a magnetic box. Ooh. Man, does that look pretty. Alright, uh, bring you in and give you a close look. Alright, so here's what's inside the package. See, we got a, a little. Is that some kind of a pin? Yes, yeah, a little lapel pin. We'll take that out of the package later. But uh, I got it upside down. Here we go. Yeah, it's a Shogun series Dalstrom. Really heavy too. Pretty nice. I guess they got a couple little membership cards and so on in there and now we're starting to get into the uh, here's a little catalog and uh, the info on it not that you should need a any kind of an owner's manual for it I'm showing you all the other knives in the collection and uh, over here see I guess that's probably a cleaning cloth for it and uh, there's the knife and it comes with a sheath and I'm very happy about that because part of the reason my Michelangelo is getting dull is because I don't have a sheath for it only the box that goes back in so uh, let me change the camera angle right here and we'll pull that guy out of there and take a look at it well I, I'll tell you that right now right now it's very very well packaged very well packaged uh, the weight of it is is really really uh, very heavy um, I'm not sure what this little uh, band around here is all about that's just decoration or what but it's got a nice as a hard uh, polymer or um, plastic sheath it's got the little I'm gonna drop, drop it already it's got a little Dalstrom um, little logo right there in the handle it's, it's a full tang knife so the blade goes all the way through the handle it's not just stuck in there full tang knife uh, it's beautifully polished on the handle there you look at it it's also got uh, Dalstrom engraved in the bottom there hoping all this is showing up for you guys handle is really nice uh, there is a little texture to it. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of. We'll have to find out that for you. Let's go ahead and uh, pull the sheath. Okay, so, alright, it's got a lock. Alright, that's what I'm looking at. That's the reason for the, the little string. There is an actual lock here. A little pin. A little pin here. You can pull out that locks the knife into the sheath. And this is a brand new design from them. Uh, it's a combination chef's knife cleaver. 
All right. So I'm going to bring you in close and let you check out the blade. All right, I'm going to let you get up close and personal with it. It's the uh, handle area there. The Alstrom is. And it is a multi layered steel blade. It's got a laser engraving right there of the Alstrom logo. Absolutely gorgeous knife. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over, look at the other side. So it only has the logo on one side uh, as far as on the blade itself. I'm really digging the, the, this, this design that they come up with. It's like a blend between a cleaver and a uh, chef's knife because I'm always like to cut my stuff and then pick it up right on the knife and put it into containers or right into what I'm cooking. So I thought that was a really clever design to kind of blend the two together because those are my two favorite kinds of knives is a cleaver and a chef's knife. But this got a lot of real estate for your stuff to sit on. Um, so what I guess we'll go do next is going to break out some stuff we're going to cook for you here today and uh, see how it cuts. All right, so we we've it's time to cook with and use this uh, Dow Strong knife for the. For the first time and see how it does today I'm going to do up a beautiful pork dish what I have here is some uh, pork shoulder blade steaks they look nice and marbled really really those are pretty awesome all right so that's our main ingredient or one of our proteins here so I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the other stuff you're going to need to make this uh, this is just a backwoods gourmet pork stew I just kind of came up with a few years back and it's worked out really well and it's always turned out delicious right here we have some of our uh, attempt at making smoked bacon uh, it tastes okay but it's pretty salty so it's more like salt pork so substitute salt pork for this that's why I'm using this today because my original recipe used salt pork all right gonna need some uh, better than bouillon uh, chicken broth or some already prepared chicken broth I would get the low sodium kind a cup of flour in a bowl uh, there's a couple of onions right from our garden uh, three stalks uh, half stalks of celery a couple carrots some baby bella mushrooms if you don't like them leave them out all right uh, sweet potato I'm going to use but you can definitely substitute a regular white russet potato or the little reds I have some of them in there you know we've been trying to cut carbs a little bit and it you know a lot of people say oh sweet potato is just as much carbs as a regular potato well that may be true but they do have more fiber so there's slightly less carbs than a regular potato uh, I got some uh, green tomatillos here or you can use green tomatoes uh, I don't have any green tomatoes yet uh, garlic, fresh garlic, uh, one Granny Smith apple, one Granny Smith apple, Seminole Swamp seasoning, uh, fresh cilantro and parsley. If you don't have it, use dried. I'm going to use some of this Goyo Sofrito tomato uh, cooking base. Gives it a really nice flavor. A little bit of apple cider vinegar and some olive oil to get everything going. So let's. Uh, step into the first part you know that every good Dutch oven cook starts out with bacon so that's why our number 10 lodge is sitting right here so let's go ahead and get that fire ready and we'll start putting it all together all right so let's go ahead and take this guy out of the sheets again here and again this is a beautiful beautiful knife from Dalstrong and uh, I'll go ahead and see we need we need some bacon chunks okay so we're going to slice this pretty thick and I only need about two chunks of this all right and that knife just glides right through that
So our meat's all cut up. I'm going to give it a pretty generous uh, coating of Seminole Swamp Season. Use your favorite if you can't get Seminole Swamp Season. Seminole Swamp Season has been a favorite of mine for years now. I've been using it here on the channel. They don't pay me a dime to promote their product. They do uh, provide us some Seminole Swamp Season to use here. And they do provide some for to give away to you guys. But all that being said, I'm not going to use it and I'm not going to eat it if I don't like it. I don't give a, you know, I care whether they're giving it to me or not. You can give me something I don't like. That don't, you know, I'm not going to keep using it on what I'm eating. And, and obviously what we're making here at the studio, we're eating. So if I didn't like it, I wouldn't use it and I wouldn't tell you guys about it. I like to start these all out in a line so you can keep moving that pot. Keep that nice nice and hot on the bottom. So we're gonna start out with a little sear. Alright, so you may be able to hear sizzling in the background is the uh, our salty bacon, salt pork. And uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and toss all of our pork steak cubes right up in this flour. Start giving them a good toss around, get them all nice and coated. And this is all purpose flour, but you could use self rising flour. I don't think it really matters. All we're trying to do here is render these down and get most of that oil out of them. It's getting a little hot. Let's drag it off over here a little bit. All right, break a few of them coals out from under there. This is the easiest heat control you'll ever find. Back on it. Leave these guys over here to the side. That sounds better. After you do this as long as I have, I've been here on YouTube doing uh, Dutch oven cooking since 2009 so that's 11 years and um, I've been doing it way before that all the way back to when I was in the Boy Scouts so a lot of times you can hear what's going on in that pan even if you're not standing there looking at it good old sweet potato and I'm gonna this is one of the hardest things to cut up if you've ever cut try to slice a sweet potato when it's raw it is just a nightmare to cut even with the best of knives this style strong that goes straight through it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that outer husk off of it try to get most of that uh, lighter orange part right off of it by cutting it in slices this way and just fall on that skin right down the shape of the potato and unlike a cleaver you still got this point here that's going to allow you to make that curve and kind of follow it see there you can use this with just like a chef's knife but you get the strength and the uh, functionality of a cleaver also so we'll go ahead and do that with the rest of this sweet potato and then we're going to chunk it up and we'll throw it right in there 
And that curved blade just lets you do a nice rocking motion to help with these tougher items like our friend the sweet potato. So let me show you real quick how I prepare these tomatillas. They have a skin on them. They're like a green tomato with a skin. You got the stem in and you got the, the, the bud end. And what you do is just peel this back, right? Pinch it at the top and pull it off. Okay, and it's kind of a waxy layer under there. Then what I do is I, I like to take and just split them right down the stem. All right, and then I carefully come in and take out the stem using the tip of the knife and a little V and just take that stem right off. We'll discard that. You can take that, it's kind of like taking the core out of it and made it do the same thing. All right. I can tell you what guys, it's only been a few minutes since I put them coals on the top, but things are smelling awesome over here right now. I'm going to go ahead and give that a stir. Some of that moisture is starting to come out of them veg. Sweet potatoes are already starting to soften. Let me set this lid aside. And that looks good. Oh, I wish you guys were here to smell that. Go ahead and put our tomatillas and garlic in there. Get them down in there a little bit. All right, Put that lid back on. So I've been trying to keep that lid stoked, get that up to a nice simmer, and it's smelling awesome. I'm gonna go ahead with that's about three quarters of the apple, the Granny Smith apple that I stuck. Uh, I left the skin on it, cored it, but chopped it up. So that's going to go right in there with the pork. Alright, and we'll give that a couple minutes and we're going to put in our final ingredients. Oh, I wish you guys were here to smell that right there. A couple more minutes been in. And uh, one of the last things I like to do to give it just a little kick. There's some uh, organic apple cider vinegar. That is about two teaspoons. All right. So at the end here, we just put that water in there. I'll go ahead and take whatever remaining coals I had left over that are not on the bottom and throw them up on the top just to make sure everything comes up as quickly as possible. This is getting late campers are ready to, to eat so at this point nothing's going to burn we got enough liquid in there so put as many coals as you want right on top of that oven hey even better if you got your campfire just get you a big shovel load and throw them right on there top Alright, so right over the whole dish there, we're just going to give it a little sprinkle of cilantro. Those are our ingredients up front there. And uh, we'll put this on a plate, see how it tastes.
Alright, serve this up backwards gourmet style. Plate in the bowl. Make sure you're getting some of that meat in there. And all your different veggies. There. Got a little parsley right on top also. That's gonna give it a nice freshness. There you go. That's Backwoods Gourmet Pork Stew. Done in the Dutch oven. So as far as I know, this is a Backwoods Gourmet original for pork shoulder stew with sweet potatoes, apples, and a Miroquois. It's super delicious. I hope you guys will try this recipe. So what was my overall impression with the new Dow Strong Cleaver Chef Knife Hybrid Knife. I'm blown away by it. I tell you that right now. Uh, the thing is uh, super sharp. I really, really, really love the design of it. It's it's very versatile. So if you're looking to cut down on the amount of knives you have around, uh, either in your chef bag or at your house. This was a very, very innovative idea, I believe, you know, to try to combine that, uh, the cleaver with the chef knife. But I tell you what, go over there at dowstrong.com. I'm gonna leave you a link down in the description box below uh, to go over there and check out their entire line of Dowstrong knives. They have some over there called the Gladiator design. They're really cool looking, especially for some of you younger people. Uh, everything from classic designs to this, this the, you know, this, the Shogun here, more modeled after Japanese knives. Uh, at the Gladiator series, they have tons and tons of great, great knives on their website over there. And if all the rest of them are as a good a quality as this one right here, you're definitely, definitely going to be satisfied with that purchase. I know you're always asking us to taste our food every time, so let's go in and take a little taste. Mm. That is fantastic as always. The combination of the pork with the sweetness of the carrots and apples, really, and the sweet potatoes, actually really bring out the flavor of the pork. Mm. Since we started that pork really early in the process, it's just pork tender. So I hope you guys will try this one out and go check out those Dow Strong knives. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do right here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right there. And for a whole playlist of product reviews, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.